His team has won four in a row. The 49ers have won five in a row. And both of these teams have scored 30 or more points in each year, every one of those wins. So only the second time that's happened in NFL history. Panthers won the toss, deferred to the second half, and here we go. And back through the back of the end zone, the 49ers will take over at the 20-yard line. Colin Kaepernick turned 26 years young this week. Of course, last year electrified the NFL after taking over the reins of the 49ers in week 11. Went 7-3 and three as a starter, won the NFC Championship, got beat in the Super Bowl. He hit on 57% of his passes, nine touchdowns and five interceptions. power here today. Both of these teams love to run it, and both of them very good at shutting down the opponent's run game. Frank Gore on first down, and nothing there against the second-best run defense in the National Football League. You talk about power on power. It begins up front with all these first-round draft choices in the offensive line. Joe Staley, Mike Upati, Anthony Davis, and watch for the fullback, Bruce Miller. Frank Gore loves to follow his fullback into the line. Gain of the yard, second down and nine for San Francisco. give up 13 points per game, second only to Kansas City. Well, we talked about how stout this defense is, starting in the middle with star Luke LA and Luke Keekley, one of the best inside linebackers in the league. But if they're going to stop the run, you might see the two safeties, Mike Mitchell and Michael, coming down into the box because this is going to be quite a load stopping this running game of the 49ers with just a standard seven-man front. Patient running, a couple of stiff arms into Luke Keekley. And that is a gain of close to 10. It's a gain of 11 and a 49er first down. What did Ron Rivera tell us about Frank Gore? He said patience and vision. And this is a perfect example. He's following Miller in there. He waits. He waits until the alley opens up and then spurts to the outside for the gain, extra gain in the yards. This is patient running by Frank Gore. Boy, 30 years old, grew up in Miami, played collegiately for the Hurricanes, a 49ers all-time leader in rushing yards and rushing touchdowns. Kaepernick, short drop, pump fake, looking down the field, and it's dropped. Should have been an interception by the captain, Captain Munderland. He's already brought back one interception for a touchdown this year. Watch him peeking at the quarterback the whole way. He sees the play fake, knows something's up, comes off outside coverage to possibly get the interception. That would have been a huge turnover for Carolina, putting them on a shorter field. Much needed when you play on the road, particularly in a place like San Francisco. First charge timeout, San Francisco. Niners take the timeout on this opening drive. A second down and 10 when we come back. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. Welcome back to San Francisco. Opening drive of the game, Michael Crabtree. We caught 85 passes a season ago. Ruptured his Achilles back in May, started practicing this week. He could be back in the next two weeks. Today, the 49ers get Mario Manningham back for the first time all year long. And a big run for Gore. And he's in the Carolina territory down to the 40-yard line.
after what should have been a Carolina takeaway. I want you to see what happens to Greg Hardy on the outside with this read option. He has to pause just for a second to check out Colin Kaepernick, and that allows Frank Gore to gouge him on the inside. And here's the big fullback, Miller, gobbling up Thomas Davis on the inside. Live again from the San Francisco 20-yard line. Two and a half minutes have gone by in the opening quarter. Two of the hottest teams in all the football. And Gore very busy early on. They're going to test this number two ranked Carolina Panthers defense. 49ers during this five-game win streak. Rushing for 184 yards per game. Averaging 35 points per game. Their defense has been spectacular. And they have outscored the five opponents by better than three touchdowns. Catch made on the near side by Antoine Bolden. This is his first year as a 49er. Spent the last three years, of course, in Baltimore, where he won a Super Bowl ring against these Niners a year ago. Well, they lost Delaney Walker, the tight end that was in conjunction with Vernon Davis, and he was kind of the intermediate guy that Anquan Bolin now has replaced. What they're still missing is that big vertical threat down the field. Third down and slam to the deck behind the line of scrimmage is Gore. That's Charles Johnson, their outstanding defensive end. And now decision time, and they try a long field goal. Yeah, he just shot the gap here. You better account for that big man on the outside. 49ers deciding that points could be a premium in this game, so they're opting for the field goal. Phil Dawson in his first year as a 49er. He's got his first 14 years in Cleveland. His season long is 44, his career long 56. This is a 53-yard attempt. That ball's hammered. And it's good. Well, the 49ers come away with three. Now Cam Newton and the Panthers get the football when we return to Candlestick Park. Today's game is sponsored by Bud Light, official beer sponsor of the NFL. 49ers an early 3-0 lead, and now the Panthers get the football. Former 49er Ted Ginn Jr. He certainly has found a, a nice home with the Panthers this year, not only doing it on kickoff returns and punt returns, but it's been a big part of their offense as a wide receiver. Among the fastest players in the NFL, and here he comes from a yard into his own end zone. And Ginn out across the 20 and tackled at the 22-yard line. In one week, the next evolution of cop drama is here. Don't miss the groundbreaking show that is critics raving, almost human. The two-night premiere starts one week from tonight, only on Fox. Cam Newton, 24 years old, grew up outside of Atlanta, won a national championship in the Heisman Trophy at Auburn. The first pick in the 2011 draft, and for the first time in six weeks, He's under center with his team behind in the game. And he'll come out throwing the football. And wrapped up from behind, Dan Scuda. Scuda back up in Cincinnati. Started the last now six games in place of Alden Smith. Well, we will get a look at Alden Smith here today, coming off a 19 and a half sack season a year ago, and just out of substance abuse rehab this week. Yeah, we'll see him primarily in nickel situations, maybe 20 snaps on the game. Scooter's done a nice job filling in for him, particularly on first and second down. Cuts it back to the inside. We talked about how stout the Carolina defense is against the run. San Francisco, 12th best against the run. Well, this offense, Nate Chandler, 
starting for his first start at right guard is going to be a factor. But the three-headed monster at running back, D'Angelo Williams, Jonathan Stewart, and Mike Tolbert is something the 49ers are going to have to see in rotation all day long. Stewie, number 28, saw his first game action since November of last year. Had surgery on both ankles. Had nine carries, 43 yards a week ago. Great protection, and now Newton flushed out of the pocket. Ahmad Brooks drags him down all the way back to the eight-yard line. Brilliant job by Ahmad Brooks on the outside. Normally, Cam Newton, this is a big man. 6'5", 245 pounds, he fights off the protection. Normally, a Cam Newton can step back and out of this, but Ahmad Brooks is going to have no part of it. Keeps him in the grass and brings him down. Now has Carolina punting out of the shadow of their own goal post. Well, Michael James dropped back to receive this punt from Brad Norman. James has never returned a punt in a regular season game, and he has backed up all the way to the 24. And tackled right there. Great coverage by Carolina. Josh Thomas, the first one down. Running backs looking for holes like it's Lombard Street before this one's said and done. Today's game is sponsored by the all-new 2014 Jeep Cherokee, built free. By Taco Bell, sometimes you gotta live moss. And by Direct TV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you got to get Direct TV. Spectacular Golden Gate Bridge. Leaving downtown San Francisco, heading out to Brian Billick territory over in Marin County. Spectacular weekend. I tell you what, it's great coming home. This is where you began your NFL life right here with the 49ers. Two million years ago. Michael James getting just his eighth carry of the season. Well, you watch the 49ers before the game gets started. And Jim Harbaugh looks like he's ready to put the pads back on. Look at him. Look at him spin this thing. That, that's pretty tough. It's a little depressing when the best thrower on your team is your, court, is your coach. He's having fun just like his dad, Jack. I tell you what, anybody had a chance to, to meet the Harbaugh brothers, Jim and John, and it doesn't fall far from the tree. His dad, Jack, one of the most enthusiastic, best coaches I've ever been around. There's Jim Harbaugh, the son of Jack Harbaugh. Grew up as a football family dog, bouncing around town to town, and that one is thrown right on the button, but short of a first down. And making his first catch of the year is Mario Manningham. Played in 12 games his first year as a 49er last year. Talk about spinning the ball. Colin Kaepernick has one of the sweetest throwing actions I've ever seen. They're loving having Mario Manningham back. We saw him on Friday. He was working hard with the trainers and the backup quarterback. They get him back, they get Michael Crabtree back, they're getting healthy at just the right time. Jumbo package in there. Two extra linemen on a third down and a yard. Miller leads away, and Thor is dropped behind the line of scrimmage. What a play made by A.J. Klein, the rookie out of Iowa State, who's making his first start of the year and the first start of his career in place of the injured Chase Blackburn. I want you to watch the way they collapse the blocking scheme of the 49ers and then just fill, leave the open gap, allowing Klein to come in, building that proverbial picket fence with the 49ers. No place to go. Big stop on third down and a yard for Carolina. And a three-time Pro Bowl punter, Andy Lee. Puts a right foot on it, and this one is hammered like the last one from Norton. From the five, Ted Ginn Jr. Still on his feet, and a good return by the former 49er up to the 27-yard line. 60-yard punt, 20-yard return by Ginn. Panthers get it back, trailing 3-0. Well, these two young quarterbacks, so dynamic, can beat you through the air, can beat you running the football. Yeah, the, both these guys are crafting the game. Cam Newton has become more dependable, more reliable in the pocket. 
give up a little bit of explosiveness. And uh, Colin Kaepernick's got to be a little more effective down the field, higher completion percentage, but both have dynamic futures ahead of them. Over his first carry. And that'll be a gain of close to four. The 49ers on defense rank sixth overall in the NFL, fourth in points per game allowed. Like Carolina, it starts up front, nose tackle, Glenn Dorsey, Patrick Willis, one of the elite inside backers. And like we said about Carolina, the safeties, Dante Whitner and Eric Reed, may have to get more involved to stop the running game of the Carolina Panthers. Eric Reed won that starting job back in training camp, kicked off his NFL career with a bang, first 49er ever with an interception in each of his first two games in the NFL. Newton finds Brandon LaFell. It looked like he stepped out of bounds a yard short of the first down and breaks up third and one. Brandon LaFell is someone that they're excited about how he's come along. Of course, they've had Steve Smith for years, waiting for that next guy to come up as the counterbalance. They think Brandon LaFell is that guy. Had that big catch in the recovery of the fumble to get them started last week against Atlanta. And it was a game where Newton was not very sharp last week. Was not, but was able to pull out late in the game. Well, he said it was shotgun on third down in the yard. And they give it to Tolbert, and that's the first down. Up to the 39-yard line, so the chains will move for this Carolina offense. Third down is certainly something we always watch, Brian, and Carolina on third down offensively, the third best in the league. Defensively, San Francisco is third best in the league. And you can understand with Carolina in that third and short to medium, with the running ability of these backs and Cam Newton, that's a lethal combination on third and short to medium. 49ers need to keep them like the last drive in third and long. First carry today for Jonathan Stewart. He looked very good in that first game back last week. That's a good first carry of the afternoon, a gain of nearly six. Well, in case you missed it, tune in to Fox Sports Live, 11 p.m. Eastern, for what more of our exclusive interview, great interview, Jay Glazer have with Richie Incognito today. Of course, Jay and Dan will have all the scores and highlights around the NFL. On Fox Sports 1, 11 p.m. Eastern. To find Fox Sports 1 on your provider, go to foxsports1.com right now. Stewart, nowhere to run. Slowed down by the cornerback, Carlos Rogers, who forced it back to the inside, and Smith was there to get it. As we talked about earlier, as good a running attack as these two teams have, your secondary is going to have to get involved. Both these teams were going to challenge one another to see if their basic defenses, their seven-man fronts, could hold up against the run. Likely it's going to take that secondary level, whether it be the corners or the safeties, to come up and nail these winning attacks down. Third and four, and Newton will run it himself. And he lost his footing, but then dives forward, got tripped up by Ray McDonald. Very close to a first down, depending on the spot. He's got it. Well, the pass rush is all upfield, and you're not going to see a lot of man coverage from these teams because they're not going to turn their back to these two quarterbacks. You can see Navarro Bowman sitting right there in the middle getting an eyeball. I don't know if he was going to make that tackle if Cam Newton hadn't tripped up. But you're not going to see a lot of man defense against these running quarterbacks. You can't afford to turn everybody's back on these athletic big play quarterbacks. Over it initially split wide to the left, now comes back in, and Newton to throw it on first down, fakes it one way, and just threw it away under heavy pressure. DeMarcus Dobbs. Well, let's check in downstairs for the first time today and welcome in Laura Oakman. Hi, Laura. Hi, Tom. The Niners are working on the passing attack today. They're going to have a little tougher time without tight end Garrett Selleck. He is out for the remainder of the game with a hamstring injury. Tough duty there. Selleck, of course, the younger brother of Philadelphia Eagle tight end Brent Selleck. The 
Jim Harbaugh, a man short there. Second down and 10 from midfield. The Niners a 3 nothing lead. Had a wide open tight end, Greg Olson, and Newton missed it. Those are the type of throws that Cam Newton excels at. He has got such a strong, powerful arm. Anything to the outside, deep outside throws. We saw one to Brandon LaFell a minute ago. That was really a pretty accurate pass to Greg Olson on the outside. That is his strength. It's the intermediate throws across the middle of the field where he's got to develop a little bit more touch to find that effectiveness that we're talking about. Newton won for his first four. Five yards, third and ten. Newton scrambling and just throws it away. So the drive stalls right at midfield. And the Panthers for the second time will punt. Well, we said it earlier. San Francisco can get Cam Newton in this Carolina offense into third and longs. They're going to fare much better than those third and shorts, third and mediums. William Michael James, they had him working as a punt returner going back to last year, struggled during the preseason. Brad Norton, hand over end, and he'll let it bounce, and it's down to the 24-yard line. Smash mouth football, it's been that way so far. 3-0, 49ers in the opening quarter. Three nothing, 49ers. 2:23 to play in the opening quarter. Scores from earlier today. Brian, a huge win for Detroit, going to Chicago. The Bears went for the game tying two point conversion. Stuff. That's what I'm looking for this time of year, Tom. Who can go on the road to get a big win? That certainly qualifies with Detroit beating Chicago in Chicago. And Andrew Luck, three interceptions wow. today at home, wow. Indianapolis, wow. hammered by the St. Louis Rams. As 49er fans most concerned about Seattle. First down, Kaepernick is sacked. All the way back to the 17, and that's DeJuan Edwards. He played for the first time in six weeks last week. That's his first sack of the year. Just coming along on the outside. They're packing the box with the safeties we talked about. That's why Colin Kaepernick came out, thought he was going to have a shot down the field, had one-on-one -on -one coverages with them stacking the box for pressure and to stop the run, couldn't convert. Be hard pressed to find a better front seven among all the teams in the NFL than these two teams getting together here today. Four on a second down carry is up to the 25 yard line. It brings up third down and almost 10. And we check in again downstairs with Laura. Hi, Tom. I was talking to Vernon Davis about the word the Panthers have been using during their winning streak relevance. And he literally went saying, I remember how awful it felt not to be relevant, to have nothing to play for. And there's nothing that fails better, that felt better. When you got hope, when you started playing for something, for relevance, Carolina is starving for this win today, and it makes them extremely dangerous. They attend to play in the opening quarter. There's no two ways about it. The first thing everybody says during this win streak is who did they beat? And now Kaepernick fakes a throw, and he's wrapped up short of the first down. And guess who was there to meet him? The NFL's leading tackler since he came into the NFL a season ago, the 22-year-old Cincinnati, Ohio native Luke Keek. Well, just like we talked about earlier, you're not going to turn your back on Colin Kaepernick. You're going to play zone. You're going to drop into your spots, keep your vision in front of you, and close and tackle just like Keekley did there on Colin Kaepernick. How about that, though? No, Carolina's not allowed a first quarter touchdown. And now 12 consecutive games, and that one is partially blocked. And picking up the football and losing the football is Carolina, and the 49ers say they've recovered it. They have. And you have to wonder, Brian, what in the world 
was that Panther thinking over on the far side of the field about trying to pick up that football? Well, you're going to see this coming off the outside edge here. Just gets a piece of it, and at this point, it's just get away from it. This is touched from behind the line. They don't have to do anything. Of course, it just kind of kicked back into him. Obviously didn't realize, did Drayton Florence, that the ball was going to kick back into him. Now he's just trying to cover on a huge break for the 49ers because they were about to put Carolina on a short field. Now they've got a short field of their own. Well, that answered the question after we saw that replay. Jordan Shen was the one who blocked the punt, but after it hit Florence, he had to go after the football. See how stingy Carolina has been. Let's see if they take a shot here. Kaepernick out of the backfield to four, and he dives forward for a 49ers first down to the 30 on what will be the final play of the opening quarter. Two teams piling up points during for Carolina, what has been a four-game win streak, the Niners a five-game winning streak, 3 nothing in the end of the opening quarter today. Great to have you with us on this Sunday afternoon from Candlestick Park. 49ers and Panthers at the end of one quarter, 3 nothing San Francisco, first down at 10 at the Carolina 30. Four wrapped up by Keekley. That'll be a gain of three. It brings up second down and seven. You know, when Frank Gore, one of the most respected backs in the league, in the two losses that San Francisco had, he had 20 carries total in two games against Seattle and Indianapolis. And obviously on the five-game winning streak, he's been the anchor of what they've done. Such a respected back, he gets constant, he just gets positive yards. And the Hunter spells poor, they fake it to him, and Kaepernick looking. In and out of the hands, but out of bounds by the time it was caught over on the far sideline by Melvin White, so third and seven. Well, for San Francisco, the tight end position obviously is the key for them in terms of down the field. They're already down Garrick Selleck. But Vernon Davis, he's their go-to guy. We haven't seen him yet today. He's their best vertical threat, uh, actually. But at some point, they're going to have to get him involved, no better than here in the third and long. Blitz coming. And it's incomplete. They had an eye on Davis, but that ball was thrown low. Not sure even if he catches it that he'd get the first down. So once again, Carolina does what they have done all year long. The teams getting the football in their territory, rare albeit. That's where they get even better on defense. And Ron Rivera is going to feel good about his team right now because you know coming in on the road, it's keep it close, guys. If we're within striking distance in the fourth quarter, we can get this tough road win against the 49ers. Having them settle for two field goals or a field goal and a field goal attempt, big wins for the defense. 43 yards away, and it is good for Dawson. 6 nothing. 49ers. You're watching the NFL on Fox. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by USAA. To everyone who has served, this Veterans Day USAA salutes you. By Citizen Echo Drive, fueled by light, it never needs a battery. And by Miller Lite. It's not just a good time, it's Miller time. Six-nothing, San Francisco in front. The Seattle Seahawks have already won today. That's a team the Niners are chasing in the NFC West. And meanwhile, for... The Carolina Panthers, after getting a win, coupled with a Saints loss last week, New Orleans plays at home later tonight against Dallas. It's, it's hard to think of these two teams as being second-place teams yep. going in because of the winning streaks, and obviously still very viable in their respective division races. Now, through the 
back to the end zone. Cam Newton and the Panthers lost their first two games of the year in heartbreak fashion. They won a game over the Giants, lost a game in Arizona, but now wins over Minnesota, St. Louis, Tampa, and Atlanta. 30 or more points and four straight in the defense like the 49ers has been spectacular. The 49ers are beating teams by an average of 22 a game during this four-game win streak for Ron Rivera's team. They beat the opponents by 21 a game. The first down from the 20, they play fake it to Stewart. And Newton looking the near sideline, and that looked like a ball that could have been caught by Steve Smith. You know, it's interesting, Brian, that everybody's talking about the Panthers during this winning streak and, you know, who have they beat. Not many people are asking that question about the 49ers. They have not beaten a team during this five-game win streak that is above 500. But you know what? You play the teams on your schedule the way they're laid out. You can't control that. Say the same thing about Kansas City, the only undefeated team in the NFL right now. You play them as they come up on the schedule, and the year's over. We'll figure out what were good wins and what were. Second down and 10 for the Panthers. And they hand it off to Jonathan Stewart. Strong running right through the belly of the 49er defense. And that brings a third down and a long three, maybe four. And this is the down and distance we said that is right where Carolina wants to be at some point, not necessarily here. Cam Newton's got to start taking some shots down the field. These two teams are banging away at one another. We've yet to see really explosive plays down the field. And on the field right now, Alden Smith making his first appearance in the ballgame. First appearance since week three. He's after the game in Indianapolis. Into traffic and batted away. No penalty flag. Good coverage there by Terrell Brown on Brandon LaFell. And he starts on the inside. Actually, he's going to attack the guard rather than the end where Alden Smith normally is and takes Travell Wharton and pushes him right back into the face of Cam Newton. Well, Michael James active for the first time in a month. They've had so many issues in their return game, whether it was Kyle Williams. He fumbled the opening kickoff, both the punt last week, was replaced in the game, and now they want to give Michael, the Michael James a chance, this from the 15. Pretty good return right there. with the ball to 6-0 lead in some of the early headline acts. Russell Wilson just doing his thing in Seattle's big win in Atlanta. Big day for the Rams and Tavon Austin. And congratulations to Gus Pratt. Oh, you better believe it. You're just on bended knee as a coach. Please, God, don't let me go 0-16. So <laughs> he's avoided that. 49ers with the football from their own 32. Make it to Hunter. And Kaepernick Wrapped up all the way back to the 15, and again, that's A.J. Klein making his first NFL start. But did he have a hold of the face mask? I think Kaepernick had a hold of Klein's face mask is what we're going to see. Panthers are already celebrating. I think you're right on the nose, Coach Bill. Of course, what else would be new? <laughs> Unless I have to challenge it. If I challenge it, I have a loss. My record wasn't too good in challenges. But I think as Klein came in, he had a good hold of Kaepernick. And Kaepernick, just kind of fending him off, reached up and inadvertently got a hand on the face mask. But here Jim Harbaugh is saying it's offsetting. Both of them grabbed the hold of a face mask. Get it right! Personal foul, face mask, number seven, offense. That penalty is declined, second down. So they declined the penalty on first down. 
Well, obviously, because on the outside, this is a heck of a loss. Right there, he just reaches up. It's not, you know, on purpose. He just gets a hold of that. I don't know if it got stuck as he tried to get it out. Clearly, and Klein, there's no way he didn't come anywhere near Kaepernick's face and no mask. So Jim Harbaugh is kind of uh, uh, heading down the wrong path there. I'm not sure that as Kaepernick reached up, it didn't just get caught in the face mask. It's a loss of 14. Second down and 24. Four, no way. Well, this game is shaping up to a field position battle right now. The punters have been booming the ball and saving both these offenses. But this is the first opportunity Carolina has if they can contain them here on a third and forever. They're backed up near San Ramon to get this first down. Uh, if Carolina can keep them and force them to punt here, they can change the field position battle that's going on right now. Out of the shotgun. They need to get up to the 42 to convert. Set up the screen to Williams. That's only a gain of four. Out comes a punt team, and out we go south to Los Angeles to check in with Kurt Benefit. And how about some special teams for you? That's Justin Tucker, game winner for the Ravens. 46 yards in overtime. They knock off the Bengals and stay alive in the FC North race. Two with the defending Super Bowl champs, Tom Bryan and Laura. Big win there for your own team. It was. It was. It was. But when you got your punter doing the talking trash thing like that, that means it was only so good a day. <laughs> or, your, or your field goal kicker, I should say. We're going to see how the punter does here. Andy Lee can help get his team out of a bind with a boomer. He's more than capable. Again, on the 24, and look out. Oh, he had a seam and closing fast along that sideline. Preventing a huge return from Ted Ginn Jr. Cam Newton and the Panthers trail 6 0. Today's game is sponsored by Ford. Only Ford gives you EcoBoost fuel economy and a whole lot more. NFL saluting the service men and women. In honor of Veterans Day, tomorrow for every point scored, a donation will be made to the Pat Tillman Foundation, the USO, and the Wounded Warrior Project. For information, visit NFL.com slash salute. And we say thank you to those two young men, the men and women from all the branches of the armed services serving the greatest country in the world, the United States of America. On first down, D'Angelo Williams. It'll be a game of three. Panthers are throwing the ball a lot more today, Brian, than perhaps we suspected. They've already put it up seven times and, and really not trying to run it a lot. Well, both these teams we talked about in the open. No one's more committed to running the ball than these two teams. You can throw the Seattle Seahawks in there. When I say committed to, to running the ball, if you're balanced in the NFL, it's 60-40 pass to run. Both these teams are in the 50 to 55 percent range of pass to run. Well, in fact, the Panthers, with eight passes and eight rushes, are exactly the same. And there's Ted Ginn. And that is a first down to the 49er, 46-yard line. Ginn already has more receiving yards this year through eight games than he did in any of his three seasons with San Francisco. Last year, he had two catches the entire year. Now, in fairness to Jim Harbaugh and his staff, they had Manningham. Of course, they had a healthy Michael Crabtree. They even had Randy Moss back here again. Yeah, and, and they wish they had a few of those guys back now because they've had some difficulties due to injury sustaining that passing attack that was so prevalent last year in the second half of the season. He can throw it on first down. And batted away once more by Terrell Brown. Great coverage. And Newton took a big hit for a second time today from Dan Scooter. These two teams are certainly the ultimate fighter, but this Wednesday an all-new The Ultimate Fighter. Ooh. Tensions are running high, and the bad blood boils over. It's more than a fight for the finals. It's personal. The Ultimate final, uh, Fighter. All-new Wednesday, only on Fox Sports 1. To find Fox Sports 1 on your provider, go to foxsports1.com now. Not tomorrow. Now. Well, you like a game early on today. It's been a little shaky the last few weeks. No, 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 no. I've been practicing while you were gone. Game. 
Offense. Five yard penalty. Second down. You hear Cam Newton screaming no, thinking he got it away in time. Well, and they have sight lines, obviously, Cam Newton. They're, they're doing a lot of checking. Both quarterbacks are checking a lot today, trying to take advantage of whatever the opposing defense is showing them. He thought he got the ball off. That's a one-way conversation with the official, though. He says, you didn't get it, you didn't get it. They better hurry this time. Right there in front of him. Second and 15, they pick up the blitz, and Newton missed another open receiver. And that's something we saw from Newton last week. He had been on such a good roll for three straight weeks. But last year, had the ball sail high on him a number of times. Well, his balls, although he is a very strong-arm quarterback, they tend to be high, very flat. He needs to develop that, that touch that the legendary Bill Walsh used to talk about in terms of those intermediate routes. He's got all the arm he needs on the outside, but when the fundamentals are rushed a little bit, the ball will tend to sail on you, and that's what we've seen in Cam Newton now in the four and five games that we've had. Third down at 15, and looks like Carolina is going to call timeout. sideline. This is something we don't see a lot from quarterbacks. In fact, I don't know that I've ever seen it. He constantly comes to the sidelines talking to Ken Dorsey, the quarterback coach, talking about the play they're going to go in. He actually rewarms up and throws on the sideline between all series. I've never seen that from a quarterback before. Very down, four-man rush. Newton hangs in there. And it's intercepted. On the far sideline, streaking down is Tremaine Brock. And he is caught from behind. That's four interceptions in the last five games for Brock. I'm not sure who or even where Cam Newton was throwing that ball. Yeah, he was kind of throwing the ball away, but he had terrible mechanics on it. He never got his shoulder around. I'm not sure whether he thought he could just get the ball thrown away on the outside. I want you to watch Cam Newton. His left shoulder never really gets turned around. It's like a last minute, and he just kind of flicks it out and doesn't get anywhere near the RPMs he needs to get the ball out of bounds. Here you can see he never really see how open face he is right now. Now, obviously, Ahmad Brooks gets in there a little bit, but I don't think he affected the throw. Very poor mechanics by Cam Newton. It's a 42-yard return by Tremaine Brock. And now the Niners in business in the 24-yard line. First down with a 6-0 lead. Boy. Great move to get inside the 15 and tackle down to the 11. Again, the vision and patience of Frank Gore. He starts with a little counter move, sees it open to the left side, and then explodes out. Now he's going to carry his shoulders, keeps his pads over his feet. That sounds kind of silly. Where else are your pads going to be? But over your feet. What we're talking about is a low center of gravity. That constant forward lean is why Frank Gore gets such positive yards all the time. Gore 10 carries, 52 yards. He's replaced in the 49ers backfield by Kendall Hunter. And a timeout. This is where Carolina has been so good during this winning streak, not turning the ball over. They have a turnover on the punt that hit a Panther. It was recovered by San Francisco, but their defense, the Panther defense, holding the 49ers to just a field goal. But now all of a sudden, last game, Newton a couple of interceptions. He throws another one here today. And the 49ers with a chance now with a touchdown to go up by 13. Well, he had the three interceptions on the road against Arizona and then got on that nice run. Had a couple last week against Atlanta, but they weren't necessarily all his fault. But clearly that was bad mechanics against a good team like the 49ers on the road. Those are the kind of mistakes that just kill you. Cam Newton's got to minimize, though. More importantly, he's got to get it back. He's going to have to start making some throws down the field to get that one back. Well, it'll be a first down for the 49ers. Just outside the 10-yard line. And after the timeout, Gore checks back in. And 
they give it to him. Runs through a couple of tackles. And a gain of five to the Carolina Six. This is what I'm talking about. What you love about Frank Gore as a play caller is you're very rarely in second and longs. Even if it's not a breakout play, that was a big little play. He got four or five yards on a play that was really dead. He gets positive yards all the time, keeps you in a very convertible down and distance. People forget Gore. He had two surgically repaired knees while he was still in college. 49ers took the flyer on him, taking him in the third round. Many wondered if, if he would physically hold up. That's been one of the best picks they've ever made. And it's fumble if it's a completed pass. We are waiting on the decision on whether that was a catch or an incomplete pass. They're saying incomplete, and that's a huge break for San Francisco. Well, I'll tell you what, the question is, how long did he have control, and did he show a football move that would constitute this as a reception? Vernon Davis on the outside. He gets it tucked, turned up. Oh, boy, I tell you what. The proverbial, did he make a football move? One, two, control, turning up field. And now here comes the challenge flag. That is worth challenging. He looks like he has control to me. Well, the strip and the tackle made by Mick, Mike Mitchell, the former Oakland Raider. This is the first year this kind of play is reviewable. And where a coach can challenge this call. Carolina is challenging the ruling on the field of an incomplete pass. We'll review the play. So again, the ruling on the field is an incomplete pass. You be the judge as they take a look upstairs. It's a big call. Let's bring in Mike Pereira from Los Angeles. Mike, how did you see this? Brian and I think it looks like he made a catch. Yeah, I remember now they're going to look at this in real speed, too, to see if he had to long it up. This did not used to be reviewable, by the way. This is the first year. Sit tight here, Mike. They're going to give us the official word. And again, the ruling on the field is a an incomplete pass. After review, the ruling on the field stands. Incomplete pass. Fourth down. What'd you think about that, Mike? Yeah, see, here's the key. You can slow motion anything and make it look really like a catch, but they're going to look at it at real time. Control, that's the second foot. Ball gets knocked out before or really simultaneous with that third step. I think that's the right call. Yeah, where I get confused on these, Mike, is the football act. Looked like control two steps, yeah. turns upfield. Was that not a football act? You, you rem remember, maintain control long enough. And I think that's the thing. And to me, he said stands. And so that means there really wasn't enough to overturn it either way. So I think what he does is he's going to stay, no matter what they would have called that, he would have stayed with it. Just too close to overturn it. I'm Mike Pereira, former head of NFL officials. Thank you. Third down for the 49ers. And Gore, remember the 49ers can get a first down at the one-yard line, and Gore is denied the one-yard line. So now a decision once more for Jim Harbaugh. Well, you got to kick the field goal here. here. Makes it a two-score game. He's defensive, although it looks like he's sending Miller the fullback in. This is quite a statement by Jim Harbaugh. You're talking up 6 nothing. You kick the field goal, makes it 9 nothing. It's a two-score game. Carolina hasn't even come close to scoring. This is a gutty call by Jim Harbaugh, a statement call by Jim Harbaugh. 49ers, six out of eight on fourth down this year on fourth and one, and that's what this is right here. On fourth and one, they're a perfect four for four, and all four times they have run the ball. And yet you have Kaepernick out of the shotgun, and now walks back up under center. A timeout is called by the Panther defense. Now, does this give Jim Harbaugh a chance to rethink his initial decision? I don't know that he'll rethink it. Sometimes it's kind of like on the kickoff return team, you'll call a timeout because you want to see how they're configured. Ron Rivera may have wanted to see how they're configured. As that's Vernon Davis now, O'Brien, walking back into the 49ers locker room. 
That's a tough loss for, for the 49ers, depending upon whether he can come back. This was on the play that we were reviewing as he went down. Looked like he maybe banged his head on the turf just a little bit there. But right now, Ron Rivera seeing the alignment that the 49ers came in with, wanted to get the timeout, see how they configured themselves. The question is, do the 49ers now change it from the play they just had called? Well, that'll be two timeouts lost by the Panthers over the last three plays. A challenge lost, thus losing a timeout. And now the Panthers without a timeout for the final 621. And here we go, fourth down and a yard from a two. Trying to draw him offside, see if he can get a cheap one. But this is tactically the right call by Jim Harbaugh, given the circumstances that Carolina hasn't been able to get in scoring position at all. And I tell you, once more, you got to give it up to this Carolina defense. I mean, the 49ers have made a living scoring the second most points in the NFL off opponents' turnovers. But that is where Carolina has simply been spectacular. They have only allowed seven points all year off their turnovers. A field goal today, and now a second field goal try off of a turnover by Dawson. Two of two in a game, and from 25 yards out, makes it 9-0 49ers. As we go back to the turnover that was brought back, 42 yards by Tremaine Brock. Yeah, just a miscalculation or a bad throw by Cam Newton. And then it gets down to this catch or no catch ruled an incompletion, not a completion and a fumble. Or Mike Pereira says I'm wrong, as he always would tell me that I was when we were uh, going against one another. Obviously a big play for the 49ers. And then Carolina responding, keeping the 49ers out of the end zone, making them once again settle for a field goal. Let's check in downstairs with Laura Oakman. When we last saw Vernon Davis, you saw him going into the Niners locker room. Not too much of a surprise. Officially, they say he is being brought in to be evaluated for concussion time. Well, what a huge hit that would be for the 49ers. I mean, really, from a passing game standpoint, and the 49ers, remember, ranked dead last in the NFL in passing offense. I mean, it's either been bold. Davis or bust without Manningham and Crabtree. And they're already down Garrett Selleck, who's been taken out of the game. That means a very tight end based offense with three tight ends down to one tight end with Vance McDonald. So nine nothing game and Jim right at the goal line. Again up to the 20 yard line. And you know, Brian, you're so good at bringing up perspective going back to your days. As the 49ers are saying they had the football, it looked like Gim was already down, but perhaps not. <laughs> Carolina Bull. And Brian, you always go back to that, you know, that perspective of a coach. And now all of a sudden, the 49ers are saying they have it, and there you very clearly see the official saying it belongs to Carolina. But if you're Ron Rivera right now, I mean, clearly, Cam Newton is not off to a good start for now what would be a second straight week, despite the fact that you've won four games in a row of the Panthers. But I would imagine from a defensive standpoint and an overall standpoint, only down nine nothing after turn two turnovers, not all that bad. Ron Rivera is telling his troops, we got them right where we want them. You're playing great defense. You're holding them to field goals. Something's going to shake loose for us. I do think they need to start taking those shots down the field. They're running the ball well enough, play action fake. Cam Newton's going to have to affect this game with his arm as much as his legs. We've gone through nearly an entire half. Steve Smith without a catch so far. 
And no running room for Jonathan Stewart. We check in back in Los Angeles with Kurt Menefee. Arizona's Rob Hausler in his third yard of Florida Atlantic. 72 NFL catches, but this is his first touchdown. 12-yarder from Carson Palmer puts them up by seven over the Houston Texans in the second quarter. Tom, Brian, and Laura. I'll tell you what, Brian, all of a sudden, if Arizona can find a way to get a win, then goes to five and four on the year, and they're thinking about a wild card. Absolutely. The NFC West, I never thought I'd say this, but the NFC West, one of the best divisions in the NFL. A century since you could say that. You're not lying about that. Newton. Avoids a sack and turns it into a positive yardage. Up to the 23-yard line under heavy pressure. And again, it was Scooter who's been very active today, despite the fact that Alden Smith comes back. Scooter's been all over Cam Newton. Panthers have not trailed at halftime this entire year. There's Ray McDonald coming over. To the 49er sideline. Third and seven. Alden Smith's up here at the top of the formation. Across the middle, and this one on the money to Brandon LaFell, and that's a first down to the 40 yard line. Well, this guy, we've said it before now, he has got all the tools to deliver these kind of balls right on the money to Brandon LaFell. It's those passes across. You can see right here, look how that left shoulder is pointed in a little bit more. Look at the follow through. His mechanics are solid in the pocket. He's not hurried, he's not rushed, and delivers on the third down. 17-yard gain on the catch by LaFell. First down from their own 40. Brooks chasing Newton. Tries to turn it upfield and is able to pick up two yards on first down. And they're looking at Scuda over on that sideline. Yeah, Scuda is having difficulty. They may have to press Alden Smith into a little bit more duty on first and second down. They were hoping to use him just on third down. He may have to have an increased presence here. Well, you can see the frustration of a guy like Scuda. Back up four years in Cincinnati, rarely ever saw the field at linebacker. And now getting a chance to play in the absence of Smith that has played beautifully. And now injured. Blitz coming. Newton once more finds Brandon LaFell, and that's good enough for another Carolina first down to the 49-yard line. The 49ers are beginning to bring a little bit of pressure. They're not a heavy pressure team. But part of the problem with pressure is when you bring, even if it's just linebackers, you open up some of the alleys for these throws of Cam Newton. Two throws now with nothing between him and the receiver. They may have to be a little more passive in the zone, make him find shorter windows to get to the receivers than he wants to. Neither team with 100 yards of offense. D'Angelo Williams slips a tackle and dives forward to the 49er 41. That'll be a gain of seven, maybe eight on first down. For the Panthers all-time leader in rushing yards, like Gore is for San Francisco, the same is true for D'Angelo Williams. And Tom, a second ago, you talked about the loss of the timeouts. This is where it's going to start to show up. They're going to get a shot here before the two-minute warning. But Carolina, on a nice little drive here to close out the half, is out of timeouts. Blitz once more. Through the hands, it should have been intercepted. And then landing into the hands of Olsen for a first down to the 29. Navarro Bowman, you can't drop it in his hands. Take a look at this. We're the two-minute warning. Panthers get a break. Today's game is sponsored by Visa. Proud sponsor of the NFL. Visa turning football fantasies into reality. First four possessions for Carolina. Cam Newton hit on just two of 11 passes. On this drive, three out of three, 41 yards, and the Panthers knocking on the door in the 49er 27. They're inside two minutes, no timeouts. They're in field goal position. They gotta be very careful not to do anything to take them out of that scoring position. First 
now Brandon LaFell in the backfield, and they hand it off to D'Angelo Williams. Inside the 15, the 10, the 5, and a touchdown for D'Angelo Williams. What a run by the eighth year back out of Memphis, and the Panthers score for the first time today. Beautiful play design by Mike Shuler, the offensive coordinator. You're going to see Brandon LaFell motion into the backfield to set up the option going out this way, and then they just sneak it back underneath to D'Angelo Williams' little counter step. Everything comes back the other way. Greg Olson out in front leading the convoy. You got receivers blocking down the field with Ted Ginn. Touchdown, Carolina Panthers. Graham Gano for the point after. What an impressive drive for the Carolina Panthers after falling behind 9-0. Cam Newton takes him down the field, capped off by the touchdown run, and what a run it was by D'Angelo Williams. Well, what we say? This is going to be a heavyweight prize fight, body blow after body blow. This was a upper left hook. You see Ted Ginn down the field, blocking, maintaining, maintaining. That's all that D'Angelo Williams needs to get into the end zone. That was a heck of a body blow for the San Francisco 49ers. That's a heck of a drive by a Carolina offense. It really hasn't shown much the whole game. Here they're closing out the half with a heck of a long drive. Eight plays, 80 yards. Took them nearly four and a half minutes to do it. And Williams, 27 yards for the touchdown. His second rushing touchdown of the season. Now, at a minute 52, the 49ers have a timeout. They're going to have plenty of time if they can get any field position at all to try to finish or finish out the half on their terms, not the emotional downer they just had by letting the Carolina Panthers go the length of the field. Kaepernick, six out of nine, but only 43 yards so far today. Four has run the ball well and better than five yards per carry. The 49ers have missed a couple of big chances in this game after Panthers turnovers. Only coming away with field goals. And this drive will start from the 20. Well, we're going to check in with our buddy Craig Menifee to see what's coming up on the Visa halftime. Coming up on the Visa halftime, Peyton Manning and the Broncos take on the Chargers down in San Diego. The Rams pull a big upset over the Indianapolis Colts. Plus, we'll have highlights from a busy Sunday in the NFL. It's all coming up on the Visa halftime. Well, the Broncos and Chiefs will get together, what, for the first time next weekend? Yeah, and they're, they're going to play each other twice in a three-week period of time. This will be an interesting challenge for both these clubs. Let's see what the 49ers would like to do. Kaepernick come out and throw it. Safe throw. Antoine Bolden. Into the 28. Where's Jim Harbaugh? I formation. I formation. We have got to get the three technique blocked. I'm not angry. I'm not yelling. Nobody's tackling anybody. That was good stuff. Coach Harbaugh. Oh, yes. You know what? I know they probably take that as commercial, but he thought there was really a game. <laughs> It took a long time to get that play on. And then a big hit on what is ruled an incompleted pass. That's Drayton Florence picking up the football. And there is a penalty flag down. The question is, did Florence lead with the helmet on Kendall Hunter? Well, I don't know. It, it, we'll have to come back and look at the replay. Officials will have to tell us what they want. It looked like he led in with his shoulder and didn't make contact with the helmet. Pass, and there's no foul for an illegal hit to a hit defenseless receiver. Third down. I bet answers that. Ball just comes out to the flat. Drayton Florence has him sized up. The ball, he never really has control of the ball. And you can see he keeps it down. I don't even know there was helmet to helmet. That's a good defensive play. He's aiming low. Leads with the shoulder, has the helmet down. I don't know that it actually, his head kicks up a little bit, but that was just a jolting of the body. Good non-call. Well, now third down and a yard. A minute 10 to go. 49ers have one timeout. And it off. And Kendall Hunter up for the first down. Up to the 32-yard line. 
Thomas Davis is and Luke Keekley. Thomas Davis in particular is just screaming. He got tackled on the inside. Got hooked by the offensive lineman. You know, we talk about Luke Keekley and Patrick Willis, really good tandem linebackers. Navarro Bowman to go with Patrick Willis in San Francisco, and Thomas Davis having a good solid year to go with Luke Keekley, the Carolina Panthers. It's coming. And Kaepernick is sacked all the way back to the 22 yard line. Mike Mitchell, a backup for four years in Oakland out of Ohio University, and he has become a playmaker for these Carolina Panthers. And Mike Mitchell started on the second level on that blitz. It took him a while to get there. No place to go for Colin Kaepernick. Nobody's going to account for a secondary man coming from that depth that late. After that sack, they're still in hurry up mode. Kaepernick rolling around, and clearly, this Carolina front seven, a play and go, bringing the blitz with a safety. They're creating a lot of problems for Kaepernick, who's had very little time to throw. And like we saw in the previous play, it's because they've got no place to go down the field. They don't have to commit secondary people. Usually, they did Mike Mitchell the previous play, but it gives them a lot of latitude on the back end where they can put pressure with their front seven that typically might include Luke Keekley or Thomas Davis as well. It's be a third down and four out. Need to get all the way up to the 42. To the 36-yard line is Kendall Hunter. And the clock continues to roll, and Carolina can't stop it. Don't forget, Carolina gets a football to begin the second half. The Panthers won the coin toss and the third to the second stanza. The kind of game we expected. It's the first time all year long. The Panthers have trailed at halftime, but they get the late score on the 27-yard run by D'Angelo Williams. And trail the Niners 9-7. We go to Kurt Menefee in Los Angeles. Time now for the Visa Halftime. I'll be racing our hearts, shining up to the sky. Cause we got the fire, fire, fire. Yeah, we got the fire, fire, fire. And we're gonna let it burn, 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 burn. We're gonna let it burn, 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 burn. burn. Gonna let it burn, 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 burn. We're gonna let it burn. Panthers get the football to begin the second half. Follow your favorite team all season long. Just go to iTunes.com slash NFL. Both teams are set to go. The 49ers in front 9-7. to seven. All right, Coach Billick, let's go inside the locker room. Well, Carolina's got to stay balanced. They're actually throwing more than running right now. San Francisco's got to convert on third, convert on third down. They're one of three, and somebody has to make a big play for somebody. Right now, only one long drive, Carolina, at the end of the half. Ted Ginn has been very good in the return game when given a chance so far today. No chance that time. And this drive starts at the 20. Let's check in downstairs. All the latest information from Laura Oakley. Tom Ron Rivera said this game is going to be a good indication of where his team is. I said, one half in, where are you? He said, exactly where we need to be. Long hauler defense is playing so physically. Offensively, he said, Cam's been throwing too high. It's a big game. We need to calm him down. Our wide receivers need to get separation, keep running. That last drive is indicative of what we can do. Jim Harbaugh, tight lift at halftime, as always. Said need to make personnel adjustments. I asked, will Vernon Davis be one of those personnel? He said, no, he will not be available for the rest of the game. Tom? Hi, Laura. Thank you very much. It's a big story in this game as the Panthers give it to D'Angelo Williams. And a gain of a little more than a yard on first down. Williams had the 27-yard touchdown run. The only touchdown scored by either team that came in the final minute and a half of the first half. Tom, we said coming in, this is going to be like a heavyweight boxing match with body blow after body blow. We're in about the, the sixth or seventh round right now, and that's exactly what's happening. Both are pounding away trying to make something happen. Neither one's been able to capitalize after a play fake in the running game to make the big play down the field, and neither team has shown the ability to sustain a long drive to get into the end zone, save Carolina on that last drive going into the half. Olsen stays in the block. And that is the first time we have called the name of Steve Smith, his first reception today. 
five-time Pro Bowler and that's 100 straight games with a reception for Steve Smith. And you can Steve, Steve Smith, John with Navarro Bowman there a little bit. He's non-discriminatory when it comes to who he's going to <laughs> chatter with. DB, safety, linebacker makes no difference. He's going to try to draw them into their game. We'll see if Newton's starting to heat up a little bit. First four possessions. Had a hard time completing a pass. Then perfect on that touchdown drive. And now right on the button across the middle to LaFell. And he's up to the 48-yard line. That's what we're talking about with the subtlest of play fakes here opening up to that second level. You come out and hit Steve Smith on the outside. Cam Newton gives a little bit of a play fake, comes up out of it, delivers a strike into Brandon LaFell. It's the chess match, match right now. We saw in the first half about those linebackers trying to keep the vision on Cam Newton. You can see here, not the shots down the field, only one completion of greater than 15 yards. through the hands of the intended receiver Ted Ginn, second down. We check in again with Laura Oakman. Tom, I just wanted to update that report on Vernon Davis. I wasn't able to say his condition until the team conferred with the team doctor. They have its official. Vernon Davis is out for the rest of the game with a concussion. So we hope he's going to be all right. We see it every single week, Brian. Well, they're going to go through the protocol, and that's as it should be. They go back in the locker room. It's the same protocol in every locker room in the NFL. And if you don't pass it, you're not coming back in. Second down, and that's a design play for Newton. And you can't play it any better defensively than the 49ers just did. Tony Giardetti there to slow him down. Cam Newton's going to run the ball one of three ways. He's going to pull it down after a pass attempt. That's not what that was. That was a designed quarterback draw. What we haven't seen yet is the patented power running game with Cam Newton, where they take a tight end, a fullback, or a guard, pull it out in front of him in a power manner downhill. Haven't seen that yet. Third and 12. Dropping the football is Steve Smith. And that would have been enough for a first down. These are hard down and distances convert. You can see the strength of Cam Newton again. Nice fundamentals. Keeps his left shoulder pointed down the field. Wow. Steve Smith doesn't drop these very often. That's a huge third down to convert on. Started to turn his head up. He was going to do some damage with it before he actually had the ball. And you can see the frustration right there. He knows what he cost his team right there. Dortmund puts a foot on it. And Chains. And this is first game return at punts in the NFL in his two seasons in the league. And a good return there up to the 28. It was a quiet first half for Colin Kaepernick. Only 52 yards passing. His first chance in the second half when we return. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. By Chevrolet, find new roads. By Applebee's, vets and active duty military enjoy a free Applebee's entree on Veterans Day. And by K Jewelers, every kiss begins with K. Niners get the football with a 9-7 lead just underway in the third quarter. Glad to have you with us. We're two of the hottest teams in the entire NFC. Niners have won five in a row. Carolina four straight. And Kaepernick a short drop on first down. Completes to Bolden. That'll be a gain of nine on first down after the drop. It would have kept the drive alive by Smith. Yeah, third and longs are hard to convert when you have an open opportunity like this. He clearly was turning his head up to get down the field, and there's some emotion going on right now, and he knows he's as mad as himself as yeah. anything right now. He knows what a missed opportunity is right there. Brandon Lafell trying to say, don't worry about it. You're going to get it back. Yeah. 
Gain of nine on the first down pass to Bolden, so second down and actually less than a yard. And Kaepernick decided to keep the football, and you can't read it any better than that by Greg Hardy. That's twice now that Greg Hardy has played this perfectly coming off the edge. He was going to stay with Kaepernick at all costs, let the other defenders do that, show the athleticism to step up on Kaepernick when he tried to get around the edge. That's huge in handling that read option. Well, the Panthers, they have two outstanding defensive ends, both in double figures and sacks a season ago, Hardy and Johnson. And both of them on their way to getting to that number again this year. And there's early movement on the right side of the 49ers line. Ball start, number 76, offense. Five-yard penalty, third down. This Carolina defense, Tom, like you say, geez, they go from a second okay. short to a third long to now a third and real long. They're stepping up to the challenge here on the road. They just need their offense to, to match it, at least a player or two, to get them the lead in this game. The second and one, as you say, Brian, becomes now third down and 12. And Thor trying to get to the first down marker and cannot do so. So the 49ers, after getting a nine-yard run on first down, or a nine-yard pass on first down, forced to punt. Well, that now takes San Francisco to one and nine on third down. Clearly, that's the issue for them to sustain any kind of drives right now, given Carolina, which should be decent field position. Makes you wonder if something might be wrong with Ted Ginn Jr. They have Brandon LaFell now drop back to return this punt. Lee among the very best in football. Contact made on the fell after he had called for the fair catch. C.J. Spillman comes in. Panther defense. They've come to play in San Francisco. 49ers lead 9-7. Neither quarterback all that impressive so far today, although in fairness to Newton, he has started to heat up the last two possessions. He's had a couple good drives, and again, that third long drop by Steve Smith had nothing to do with Cam Newton. He delivered the ball. First down, they give it to Jonathan Stewart. Finds a hole, cutting it back up through the middle, and that'll be a gain of a little more than five. And in case you missed it, Tune in to Fox Sports Live, 11 Eastern tonight for more from Jay Glazer's exclusive interview with Richie Incognito. Of course, Jay and Dan will have all the scores and highlights around the NFL from Week 10. On Fox Sports 1 tonight, 11 Eastern, to find Fox Sports 1 on your provider, go to foxsports1.com right now. Looking around, rolling right, and just lays it off for LaFell, who flat dropped it. Laura Oakman. I know you were both talking about Ted Ginn Jr. I just want to give a, a report or an update, an update. Basically, if there is none in terms of any news, he is in the locker room. Ron Rivera said he is okay. He went into the locker room, and he will be back out. But there is no injury as of now that the Panthers are reporting. Well, they have Dominic Hickson, and they brought in from the New York Giants. He's been bothered with a bad hamstring all year long, third and five. They give it to Tolbert. And like a bowling ball, he's just bouncing on 49ers up to the 32-yard line. And there is a... An injured 49er down on the play. Eric Reed. Yep, that's a rookie. Number one pack out of LSU. And that can take a shot when you get Tolbert like that. There are collisions we see play in and play out in the NFL, but Brian, you know. 
When the players are on the field, there are certain collisions where they know it's not just your run-of-the-mill collision. And you look down there on that Panther sideline, and, and virtually every Carolina Panther was down on a knee as if in prayer, saying one for Eric Reed, who just now is sitting up for the first time after that very violent collision with a man who was right in front of him. The ball carrier on that last play, Mike Tolbert. And Mike Tolbert's right there on the knee looking at him. You're right. I don't care how chippy the game has become. I don't care what's on what's on the line here. And he's saying, I'm fine, man. I appreciate it. That's what this game's about. You love seeing that. Just a good legal hit. Every player realized but there but the grace of God go I. That's the nature of this game. You love to see that competitiveness, yet compassion for one another. Eric Reed, excellent young rookie safety. Hopefully he'll be back in the game. They just had to make sure everything was where it needed to be. Craig Dahl, number 43, will come in. He's a veteran. Started every game last year for the St. Louis Rams. He will replace Reed, who obviously we hope he's all right. What a hit he took. He brought it up with Tolbert. When that guy runs into you, oh, it, they got a load. Man. They got listed at 5'9", 243. That's just not out loud. <laughs> I mean, I guarantee you he's more than 243. And Eric Reed will attest to that. So they convert on the third down. First and 10, Carolina. Trailing 9-7. Closing in on eight minutes to go in the third quarter. Pass delivered perfectly to Dominic Kixon, and that'll be a gain of eight. That is only his third catch all year long. He's in there for Ted Ginn. Never be without football. Get coverage of every NFL game on NFL Mobile. Call Star Star NFL to download NFL Mobile right now. San Francisco's got to be a little concerned. The last three drives for Carolina, they've done nothing to stop the Panthers. Carolina's scoring at the end of the half, stopping themselves with a drop pass by Steve Smith on a third and long. They got a pretty good drive going here as well. Jonathan Stewart maybe picked up a yard. Dante Whitner. Former number one pick by Buffalo out of Ohio State. Went to his first Pro Bowl in the NFL in what was his seventh season a year ago. Boy, you look at this and you wonder how in the world can Carolina be behind. Of course, most of this coming at the end of the half in the first part of this half. Ron Revere is feeling pretty good about where his team right now is on the road here in San Francisco. Blitz coming, and clearly this communication there between Newton and Smith. Second down. Well, we haven't seen Cam Newton except one time on the design downhill run. The kind where they run the power or the specific quarterback draw, which we've seen one of. Running backs have been very effective. They've been throwing the ball fairly effective, loosening up the secondary of the 49ers. Interesting to see, see one of those Cam Newton runs. Many times when they get in this alignment, they align everybody to one side and bring Cam Newton out to the right side. Pump fake one way, then down the middle, and this time Smith hangs on. And that is the first down to the San Francisco 37-yard line. And he is lucky here. You're going to see him here in the slot. And this thing almost got intercepted. He starts inside, bends back to the outside. And at the last minute, Dante Whitner almost stepped in front of that thing. 19-yard gain. Smith bouncing back after the drop, the last Carolina possession. With a big catch there. Stewart running right into the duo of Glenn Dorsey and Patrick Willis. It's been a tough year on the health front for Willis. Back in training camp, broke his right hand for the third time in his career. Then he injured his groin in week three when they were beaten up badly by Indianapolis missed a couple of games and now it's his fourth game back in the 49er lineup 
and he is the emotional leader for this group. An outstanding young man when you hear about his background coming from a small town. Very much loves this game and steps up to the responsibility of being the leader of this defense. We're up in the state of Tennessee, did Patrick Willis. And Newton sacked just as we were talking about Willis. Kind of a delay, what we used to call a green dog by the linebacker, waited to see what the running back was engaged, and all of a sudden pulled the trigger. You're going to see him right here. Hesitates to see what's the back doing. Okay, fake, he's blocking. Now it can go. Gets in behind the protection. Cam Newton had no chance. Loss of eight brings up third down and 15. They need to get to the 49ers, 27. Smith, the catch, spins, took a big hit by Navarro Bowman to the 31-yard line. Well, we know that Graham Gano has more than enough leg to hit a field goal from this distance. He hit one you may remember last week from 55 yards out. And I said going into the half, now somebody's got to make a big play. Well, that's a big play. Steve Smith gaining just enough yards to make this a very makeable field goal for Gano. It'll be a 48-yard field goal attempt. Goodell has not missed a field goal, nor has he missed an extra point this entire year. Until now. Almost makes you wonder, was this ball tipped? Doesn't look like it. First mid. 49ers with a football and a 9 7 lead. 341 to play in the third quarter from Candlestick Park. Gore. Lots of running room across midfield to the 48 yard line. He has been by far their best offensive weapon again today in virtually a non-existent passing game. Nice job by the fullback Miller again leading up through on a simple play by Gore. Again, look at the way he carries his pads over his feet. Looking for that extra yards, but always moving forward to get just that extra one or two yards on every run. It's 13 carries, 75 yards now for Frank Gore. dead before it ever started. That was Greg Hardy and Joe Stanley on the left. Fraction, number 96, defense. His movement into the neutral zone caused a reaction by the offense. Five-yard penalty, first down. Well, who went first? And obviously it was Greg Hardy. He's hitting his head going, ah, that's me, that's me. Can't get even five down, five yards. Now it's first and five. Ryan, how much does this concern you? Being, obviously you love the running game, but dead last in the passing game. As long as I'm winning, I'm fine with it, huh? Well, it should be noted now that no team has ever won the Super Bowl. Trust me, I know Where you have that kind of disparity between your, you know, your run game and your pass game. I know a thing or two about it. Not throwing the ball well. Okay, <laughs> I don't know if that was aimed at me or not, but uh, some of that's no. by choice. You look at—they they played the Houston Texans, and Colin Kaepernick had 15 attempts and six receptions. Okay, but they had a blowout win, so they're going to win running the ball. But if they expect to make another run at the Super Bowl, no, I don't think they can end up last in throwing the ball. Again. Second down and a yard, and the ball is loose, and Carolina recovered there is a penalty flag at the line of scrimmage they took Gore out of the game Kendall Hunter was given the football there is an injured 49er it's on Mike, the field Mike your potty that's your starting left guard they're all flow guard your potty 
holding. Number 75 offense. That penalty is declined. Result of the play, fumble recovered by the defense. First down, Carolina. When Michael covered it up, we'll go back and see who put the hit on Kendall Hunter. It was a jarring hit. First turnover of the game for the 49ers. Thomas Davis on the left with a classic hit causing the fumble, allowing Quentin Michael to come in, scoop it up, and now put the Carolina Panthers in excellent position. Panthers on the road, trailing 9-7. They had never led in the game if you're just tuning in. Minute 47 to play, and they hand it off to D'Angelo Williams. And he picks up three on first down. You got to go back and see this. And if you're a high school, junior high, college coach, I don't care. DVR this. Davis with a classic. Look at that. See what you hit. Keep your legs turning. That's how you make a tackle at linebacker. You brought it up very early on. Willis and Bowman get more pub because they've been on better teams, NFC championship teams. But this duo now, Keekley and Davis, right there with them. That's D'Angelo Williams taking the direct snap out of the Wildcat formation. And he's to the San Francisco 48-yard line. Yapati appears to be all right. We'll wait and see the next time the 49ers get the ball. They've already lost tight ends Vernon Davis and Garrett Selleck. And Eric Reed took a vicious hit delivered by running back Mike Tolbert on the last drive. Those of you not with us, Davis suffering a concussion. He will not return today. Third down. Ted Ginn Jr. back in there. And it's batted down at the line of scrimmage. Tell you what, Demarcus Dobbs has had a good day today. Let's get some updates on the injury situation from Laura Oakman. Um, I want to add to what you were talking about, Eric Reed. The Niners have officially said he is in the locker room being evaluated for a possible concussion. Also, defensive tackle Ray McDonald is questionable for the rest of the game. He is out with an ankle injury right now, but let's keep growing. Well, we said this was going to be a heavyweight fight with body blow after body blow, and you're seeing the effects of it. The well, 49ers defense stands tall after the turnover. Three and out for Carolina. And now Brad Norton. Angles the punt to the sideline. Let's see where they mark it. It's inside the 15. At the 13. Fox tomorrow, the horseman returns and breaking the fight to America's favorite new drama, Sleepy Hollow. Critics rave it's hands down the craziest show on TV. Don't lose your head over an all-new episode tomorrow at 9, 8 Central on Fox. Did you just say don't lose your head hey, over Sleepy Hollow? I tell you Hollow? what, I got to hand out candy for the first time on Halloween for 35 years. There were a whole bunch of headless horsemen showing up at that door. It was great fun. I just took the barrel of candy and poured it down their neck on the top. You came to the heartland of America. I did. I had a great time in Columbus. Final seconds of the third quarter. Kaepernick coming out, throwing on first down. Nope, he's going to run it. And he slides up to the 30-yard line. That'll be a first down. A flag comes in. It might be a late hit on Kaepernick. Now we said you cannot turn your back on these quarterbacks. They can pull the ball down with nobody at that second level. That's what it turns into, that kind Personal of run. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 27 defense. He made an illegal contact to a sliding quarterback. 15 yards will be added to the end of the play. Automatic. First down. And you can see right here, Quentin Michael knowing that he came in, just couldn't quite pull off at the last second. He's down. He gave himself up. Clearly a penalty. You saw no linebackers. Luke Keekley trying to trail in the there. End of the third quarter. That is a 31-yard gain when you add in the penalty on first down. We're on our way to the fourth quarter. We've got a good one at Candlestick Park. The 49ers in front of the Panthers, 9-7. You're watching the NFL on Fox. Set to begin the fourth quarter. 
from San Francisco. 49ers come in having won five in a row. Luke Keekley and the Panthers four in a row. And a two-point game as we begin the fourth quarter. Ball start, number 81, offense, five-yard penalty, remains first down. I can imagine, Brian, if you're a coach, that has got to make you crazy. First play starting a new quarter. And at home on top of it. The tough one for me right here is this third down. That's the one that's just killing the drives. Obviously, the turnover, sacks, total yards all make a difference. But one of nine on third down. Incomplete, second down at 15. Looking right back into the sun was Manningham. But certainly no excuse for that drop. Typically in this situation, you're going to see some type of draw, either a quarterback draw, maybe with a running back, possibly a screen. Just trying to get a little bit of the yardage back to make it a convertible ball down. Kaepernick down the middle of the field, and it is incomplete. It looked like a pretty nice throw to the backup tight end, the rookie Vance McDonald. Instead, it's third and 15. This is a beautiful throw right over the helmet of Luke Keekley. Remember last week, Keekley turned and intercepted one of these throws to Tony Gonzalez. Nice job by Keekley. He's in position. That ball couldn't have been delivered any more accurately, but Keekley just gets a hold of the left arm of McDonald, and they can't convert. Remember now, 109 of 190 passes thrown by Kaepernick this year have either been thrown to Davis or Bolden. So they need somebody else to step up like Mario Manningham, very close to a first down. He looks like he's about a half a yard short. There is a penalty flag in the secondary. And Carolina saying this is against the 49ers. Of course, and again, what else would they say? I think they're going to call some type of pick. Pass interference, Pass number 81, offense. 10-yard penalty. Down. You know, Brian, I want to go back to that stat a minute ago. I mean, you're talking about a huge, overwhelming majority of Kaepernick's pass attempts this year. Completions, yards to two guys with no Crabtree and no Manningham to Davis and Bolden. And now, all of a sudden, no Vernon Davis. Absolutely, and the difference this year versus last year, you had Vernon Davis, you had Delaney Walker, you had Randy Moss, you had a Michael Crabtree. The fact that it's isolated to two guys is part of the issue for Colin Kaepernick right now. Third down and a ton. And down he goes, dropped by Charles Johnson. That is his eighth sack of the year. Johnson certainly playing his way to what should be his first Pro Bowl this season. Just simply coming off the edge. Greg Hardy's had a heck of a series. They now put Johnson on that side, stays alive off the edge. Anthony Davis loses the offensive tackle, loses that edge. You know, it's not so much how many sacks you get, when do you get them. That was a good time to get a sack. Tech engineer, we told you, check back in offensively. The last Carolina possession. He's had a couple of very good returns today, and this is returnable here from the 31. Across midfield, and again, a big return into San Francisco territory to the 44. We understand he was suffering cramps at halftime. Probably got an IV. Keekley denying the big reception of McDonald. And now the Panthers in 49er territory down by two. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Domino's. Oh, yes, we did. By Bud Light, official beer sponsor of the NFL.
and by PlayStation. Greatness awaits in stores November 15. Welcome across the Golden Gate. Welcome you south of downtown San Francisco. Where statistically, anyway, Carolina dominating the 49ers. This Carolina defense has just been spectacular. They have advertised maybe the best front seven in the game today. Maybe. Well, some of you say, oh, what about the 49ers? They've allowed fewer points today. Their defense has played great as well. But a couple of big turnovers. And Carolina's defense has been able to deny a touchdown. Catch made, but out of bounds by Olsen. Scooter on the coverage. 49ers have done a good job on Olsen. Only one catch for 14 yards today. And he should get something for style points here. This is a nice throw and catch. He just ran out of real estate. We have two first round tight ends in the game. Vernon Davis no longer playing today, and Greg Olsen. Second down at 10. On the ground, Stewart. Not much there. Gain of three, it'll bring up third down. And every possession now becomes so critically important in this game. Well, at some point, obviously, the clock, we got a 9 7 game. It's as much here. It'd be interesting if they come up just a little short with it to give Scuda, who's been so good all year long, but has already missed a long field goal. If they can get it down to maybe the 35 yard line, yet still not a first down, whether they indeed attempt the field goal to go for it on fourth and short. That's these defenses third down conversions hard to come by. Newton flushed out of the pocket, throws, and that is a catch for a first down. Money throw by Newton to Steve Smith. Just a deep comeback by Steve Smith and recognizing he's got to keep it alive. You can see him on the far right here. Expecting the ball earlier, makes his move, looks, where is it, where is it? No, no, I'm going to come back. Steve Smith, smart enough, no, see how he peeked at the chains? He knew I could only come back so far to let Cam Newton deliver. Just that laser shot, both feet inbounds. Excellent ex execution by Cam Newton, the veteran Smith. A gain of eight, first down to the 49er, 32. Angelo Williams is nowhere to run. Hey, Studa has had an outstanding game today. Again, out of Grand Valley State. And getting a chance to play regularly with no Alden Smith until today. Now you see the numbers for Smith. Shut out in the first quarter, but has come on. Had one big drop in this game. You may remember returning that fumble 47 yards for a touchdown against Jacksonville over in London two weeks ago. Now Newton, the play clock down to five seconds, has to call timeout. This is the final year of Candlestick Park. They'll be moving down the road to Santa Clara with the 49ers next year. Been so many great moments in this stadium. And a tight game here today between two of the hottest teams in the NFL. 49ers leading 9 to 7. And Newton sacked all the way back to the 45 by Amon Brooks. And watch Nate Chandler on the right side, his first start. They open up to the outside. Has his eyes on the inside. Brooks comes in almost unabated. Got to believe it's a mental error by Nate Chandler, his first start of his career at right guard. It's three like sacks for Ahmad Brooks. Like I said, it's not the number of sacks, it's when you get them. Big day for both Brooks and Scooter. We're all to talk about all the Smith coming back. Smith on a third down to the 35. And this is what you brought up a little while ago, Brian. Would they try a very long field goal? And again, for those of you that weren't with us, 
Graham Gano clubbed a 55-yarder last week against Atlanta. And the answer is yes. He will come on for what will be a 54-yard field goal try. And that throw to Smith was clearly an attempt just to cut down some of the distance for Graham Gano. Well, they're going to call it 53. It's right in between the hash. Good snap. Good hold. And Graham Gano this time delivers. They call it officially 53 yards. And Carolina leads for the first time today. Today's game is sponsored by Pizza Hut. Prep for game day by ordering online from Pizza Hut. Make it great. 49er offense looking for a little bit of that right there. Trying to liven things up. Trailing 10 to 9. With just over 10 minutes to play in the fourth quarter. And very quietly in a ball control game, it has been the former, former 49er Ted Ginn Jr. who has 82 kick return yards today. And his last punt return just set up that go-ahead field goal. And Carolina in coverage, making the tackle all the way back at the 11-yard line on Anthony Dixon. Jordan Sin and Colin Jones, the first two there to meet him. So now Kaepernick in a position he's not been in, going all the way back to week three against Indianapolis, and that's trailing. Now you can see it here, 143 yards of total offense by the 49ers. Great job by the Carolina defense, in no small part because 1-10 on third down by the 49ers. We said it was going to be a defensive battle. It was going to be a prize fight. It's every bit that, and it's not going to be a knockout to win this one. But who gets a decision? Four on first down. And a gain of two. Left up by A.J. Klein. Big East basketball comes to Fox this Saturday. A top 20 showdown. The Ohio State University Buckeyes, ranked number 11 in the country, will take on the Big East favorite, Marquette, ranked 17th. The Golden Eagles coverage begins Saturday, 1 Eastern, only on Fox. Eight and three on first down, second and seven. LaMichael James checks into the game, and they split him. Wide to the left. Blitz coming. Davis chasing Kaepernick, who just does get it away, and it's incomplete. How in the world did he evade all those chasing Panthers? You're going to watch Davis off the backside, just flat chase him down with that little step, caught him right there. The athleticism, the speed of Colin Kaepernick. Just throwing it out of bounds here, trying to minimize the damage. Seems as though Kaepernick, unless he's in a two or three step drop, has zero time on virtually every pass attempt. So now one out of ten on third down to the 49ers. Third and seven, four man rush. And incomplete. So three and out. For Kaepernick and the 49ers, who will punt it with 9.03 to go. And this is the way Carolina Panthers win football games. A short drive by the offense, long field by Gano, a three and out by the defense. we still got a full nine minutes to go, but this is where the power running game of the Carolina Panther, Panthers to grind some clock down, grind some yards down, short of driving the length of the field and scoring. That's what these two teams are built for. Talked about Ginn and how effective he has been. Yeah, granted, it's a 10 to 9 game. But when he's had a chance to bring him back today, will not have a chance here on a very short punt by Andy Lee. 8.51 to go. 49ers trailing the Carolina Panthers 10 to 9. Talk about this 49er passing game, dead last in the NFL. Colin Kaepernick is thrown for 71 yards, but when you throw in the four sacks 
The 49ers have passed for 41 yards in a game today. And now the Panthers with the ball and the lead. The 49er defense has been very good as well. Brooks with pressure on the outside. Scoot has had a great game for the 49ers. And Lou Alden Smith. You see it obviously coming from the linebacking level again with the entire linebacking crew has been a difference. We've seen Patrick Willis blitz through as well. Navarro Bowman's had a good solid game. This is an excellent linebacking four, both in pass rush and in defense for the 49ers. Ahmad Brooks with three sacks today. And now Newton incomplete. Another quarterback has been very sharp here today. And the numbers reflect that. Not very impressive. Remember, this was Colin Kaepernick that opened the season with 412 yards thrown against the Green Bay Packers. Really has not duplicated that. Really only one game over 200 yards against the Arizona Cardinals. Blitz coming on third and seven. They pick it up. And the catch is made by Ginn in midfield, and that's a first down. Again, it continues to be the wide side of the field. That is a long throw from the right hash to the left sideline. Twice now we've seen them convert on a third and long with just those deep comebacks on the outside. Cam Newton, if nothing else, can deliver on those deep outside throws. One of two teams are these Panthers along with Denver, where they have four receivers, four players with over 350 receiving yards. Play action, set up the screen to Tolbert. And what a play made by Patrick Willis. Shakes his head, says to Tolbert, no, no. That's a big player, Tolbert, at about 25 yards in front of him. It was, and I tell you right here, Willis reminds me of a player I'm very familiar with. Ray Lewis, you could not screen Ray Lewis. The anticipation, the ability to transition from recognition to action, you're exactly right. Had Patrick Willis not been able to make that tackle, that might have been that knockout punch we talked about. Closing in on seven minutes to go. Second down and 11. Stewart wraps up by Jerry Denny. And another lengthy third down attempt upcoming for the Panthers offensively. Well, on these third downs, it's all been the outside routes we've talked about. 49ers might do well to configure themselves to take away those deep outside routes, which in turn could open up the inside. Carolina 6 of 14 on third down. It's coming, and Newton is wrapped up and tackled by Dahl, who's playing for the injured Eric Reed. That's a big play made by Dahl, denying Newton the first down yardage. And out comes a Carolina punt team. On Friday, when we asked Vic Fangio, the defensive coordinator, what's the one thing you've got to do against this Carolina Panther team? His answer was immediate and simple. Tackle. You've got to be able to tackle both in the open field in line, that was a great open field tackle by Dahl. Fangio was the original Carolina Panthers defensive coordinator under then head coach Don Capers. Norton and Overend trying to bury him inside the 10. And he'll do better now. Brilliant. Down to the one by Colin Jones. He's got that reverse rugby kick that they all use now, and that thing bounces back just enough, just enough hesitation that allows Jones to come underneath it. And you can't, you can't do it any better than that. One step more, it's in the end zone. So now with 5.25 to go, 
Colin Kaepernick, his team down by a point, will start this drive from the one-yard line. What Bobby Bowden say about offense down here? Don't get nervous. Somebody's about to score. throws it out of bounds. They tried to set up a screen to Miller. And that was just read beautifully by the Panthers defensively. Brilliant defensive performance by Carolina so far. You can see Klein on the outside with a big loss on Colin, Ka Colin Kaepernick. Now you're going to see pressure, deep pressure coming in from Mike Mitchell on a safety blitz. And now a great hit by Thomas here causing the fumble. And a secure edge on the backside with Greg Hardy. Everybody's got a hand in this defensive performance by the Carolina Panthers. You have to be careful throwing the ball in the end zone. All it takes is one hold to get a safety. Four tackled right at the goal line and managed to get just across it by Hardy. Anything you're doing down here this deep, whether this you think this is as safe a job as you can do, but all of a sudden now you get caught in the end zone. Nice job, what I say about Gore, just constantly positive yards. But now on a third and long, do you throw it? Because again, remember now, if you get called holding while you're in the end zone, that's a safety. You don't want to do it, but it happens. And he's going to throw it. Slam, and a catch by Manningham for a first down. What a big-time third-down conversion. Only their second in 12 attempts the entire game. And this is just the kind of throw you need. Look how quickly the ball comes out. Just a simple slant. Brilliant accuracy catching him right on the run, and he needed to catch it on the run to get the full distance. Will be sacked for the fifth time today. Keep lead the first one there. Luke right here in the middle. We've seen pressure from Klein. We've seen pressure from Thomas. And now, again, he sees the back settle to block. That releases him now to come in and become a now a sack leader, not just a a cover in protection or a cover in cover man in coverage, I should say. Great transition from Luke Keith. Also nine. Manningham wrapped up and dragged down by Captain Munderland at the 11-yard line. So now third down, and we'll call it 14 for the 49ers. Both these inside backers, what did we see? We said the two elite backers. We saw Patrick Willis transition from recognition to tackling on the screen. There you saw Luke Keithley. The minute he saw the back block, he transitioned, now became a rush man on the outside. Outstanding play by the two elite inside linebackers. This could be the biggest play today for the 49ers. Kaepernick looking around in his end zone. Throws incomplete, and the 49ers with 2.35 to play will punt. Kaepernick has been under relentless pressure this entire game from this relentless Carolina Panther defense. And this is an outstanding offensive line of the San Francisco 49ers. You're talking about three first-round draft choices from Joe Staley, Mike Upati, Anthony Davis. Again, the front seven, the front four, more specifically on that play, of the Carolina Panthers. Great punt by Lee. Again, a fair catch at the 32. Ron Rivera, 227 away from a win. And you look at their upcoming schedule. It was on the easy side, the front half. 
But on the back half, a very different story. They've got some tough football ahead of them. New England and New Orleans most noteworthy, not that Miami, Tampa, and New York Jets, but obviously the second half schedule for them is going to be key. The ability for them to truly turn the corner, and if they can get a win here, signal that this is a transforming game for them. Jonathan Stewart across the 35 up to the 36. That'll be the gain of four. And a timeout called by the 49ers. They're first. They have two left. Talk about some tough games. Going on the road at New Orleans next week. Again in Washington the following week. A couple of divisional games. A huge one potentially against Seattle. Who drilled the 49ers in their first meeting in Seattle. Well, that's what I'm looking for. We talked about it earlier, Tom, as we're getting into November and December. You know, you play your schedule. And coaches will tell you, you play in September and October to set yourself up for November and December. Both these teams have done that. I'm looking for, particularly the NFC, who can go on the road? Can Seattle go to San Francisco? San Francisco to New Orleans. New Orleans go to Green Bay. Can Charlotte, or excuse me, Carolina come into San Francisco? Right now they are. Bottled up. Right at the line of scrimmage is Jonathan Stewart, Justin Smith, the first one there. And now another timeout will be called by the 49ers. One left, plus the two-minute warning, and a third down and nine upcoming. Tune into Fox Sports Live 11 Eastern tonight for more of Jake Lazer's exclusive interview with Richie Incognito. Jay and Dan will have all the scores and highlights from around the NFL. To find Fox Sports 1 on your provider, go to foxsports1.com. All right, let's go back to your days as play call. What are you thinking here if you're Carolina on a third down at nine? I'm not sure, given the pressure the 49ers have put on Cam Newton, that I don't get him outside the edge if I'm going to throw the ball. Give him a chance to see what he's going to throw or maybe pull it down and run with it. First down conversion to Steve Smith up to the 43-yard line. And again, an outside rocket shot. Here you see Steve Smith working him. It's all about the time. And now I'm going to get to the outside. A little bit of a shove there and just a laser shot right at the down marker to get the first down. That's a thing of beauty there, right on target. That is a huge third down conversion. They've gobbled up their timeouts, getting the classic four-minute offense. I can't think of a better team than the Carolina Panthers to try to grind clock and not give it back to the 49ers. Stewart wrapping that thing up with both hands, and now the ball comes loose. He had it with two hands. He went to one hand. And the ball was stripped out of there right in midfield, and the side judge has said it's Carolina football. And he made that determination quick. Wow. Laird Hayes, the side judge, with his back to us, immediately signaled Carolina ball. Look who's at the bottom of the pile. Maybe the strongest guy on the field in total. Had it with two hands, went to one hand. That ball stripped out of there. And Tolbert, the man on the spot. We're down to the two-minute warning. Jonathan Stewart gets stripped of the ball by Dante Whitner. Mike Tolbert fighting for possession on a big fumble recovery as the Carolina Panthers have seen all year long. Second down, and Newton will keep it himself. Looks to be about a yard short, maybe two yards short of the first down. And you can see the ball, once it comes out, it lays there for what seems like an affinity. No question it was a fumble. And it looked like Dahl almost had it going down, and then it hangs, it hangs, it hangs. And now all of a sudden, almost like they didn't know it was there, and Talbot jumps on it. You remember last week, Tom, against Atlanta, Brandon LaFell. It was a tight game in the fourth quarter. Had a big play down the field. The ball fumbled and kind of gets batted back into him. So right now, the ball literally bouncing the way of the Carolina Panthers. 
49ers have just spent their final time out. And Brian, you talk about it all the time. Another mark of a team that, that is trying to establish itself among the elite in the NFC. Little things. That four-minute drill to put a game on ice. Can Carolina finish this game on the road in San Francisco? And a first down here with no timeouts left for the 49ers. The game is over if they get the first down. Ball fumble. And Newton has to cover it up. So on third down and two, Carolina cannot make a clean exchange between Khalil and Newton. The clock will continue to run. Another 30 seconds before they have to punt it. Just the center quarterback exchange. How many of these do you do from the first practice in training camp? The ball never really comes up into Cam's hands. It looked like it might have hit his lower hand. Travell Wharton is pulling off the left side. Almost ran through Cam Newton. Wow. Now the Panthers will call timeout with 1.10 to go. 49ers don't have any more timeouts. Look ahead next week, the NFL on Fox, a doubleheader. Some will see RG3 and the Redskins against the Eagles. That'll be a big one in the NFC. And then the San Francisco 49ers. Well, you talk about a tough place to play in New Orleans. It all begins with a Fox NFL kickoff show at 11 a.m. on Fox Sports 1. Followed by Fox NFL Sunday at noon Eastern, only on Fox. 49ers are showing a lot of pressure. Maybe an all-out block. And Northland just gets all the leg in it that he can. So 102 left to go. Uh, here again, no bigger fumble recovery on the year for Carolina than this one by Mike Tolbert. Sometimes the ball just has to bounce your way. I'm not saying they didn't make their own luck here. And then right here, almost, it never gets up into Cam Newton's hands. They are so lucky the 49ers did not get a hold of that one. Jim Harbaugh hoping his team has a miracle. They need to go 80 yards in a minute, two. Of course, for a touchdown, they need to go a little more than half that distance for a field goal to win it. 